Welcome to my second part of my tutorial. As promised, this part is about Blender. Um, I have a Blender template in, template in the description. You can download it so that we have the same starting point. That you also understand what exactly all this is, I will explain it to you. Um, I have mixed different materials together. This is all based on the splat maps from World Creator. Here we have the grass material 1 and 2 where I have made small changes um, then we have the rock or stone layer and the flow layer in addition to the textures I also linked all the displacement files together so that they match the different layers I subdivided the surface of the plane uh, 100 times and applied two modifiers to it. The first one is subdivision and the second one is the displacement filter with the UV setting. Then we have the atmosphere which is pretty simple. Here we have the choice between volume scatter and principal volume. We start with the height map and add it to the displacement filter. Then I increase the strength to 400 and look for a suitable camera angle where I can now set the camera. I also adjusted the landscape so that it looks as good as possible. You have to decide for yourself what looks best for you. Then I started with the materials, the rock layer. You can see exactly which material I used here. I got all them from from mega scans, Quixel mega scans. I only use albedo and displacement. Here I increase the strength of the bump to make it even more present and I increase the scaling to 0 0.008. I remove the connection with uh, with normal. This only causes black areas. And now do the same thing with the two grass layers and at the end with the flows. Don't forget to change the color sprays from sRGB to non-color. Now we will add the first splat map for the separation of the two grass materials. Here as well um, need to change we need to change the color space to non-color. Then we separate stone and grass. You can use the color ramp to decide how much grass or stone should be visible. At the end, we add the flow, exactly the same procedure as for the previous material. For the atmosphere, I decide to use principal volume, which fits better in this case. I change the color to a light blue, as it is usually found in, in nature. It's also worth playing with the density, anisotrophy and emission strength settings. After we have set the textures and the atmosphere, we come to the trees and shrubs. I use three add-ons here. The first one is Geoscatter. You can control the distribution of all your plants perfectly and I decide to use two different types of trees. Both are from forestation. In this case, I increase the density to 0 0.05. I also select the, the slope function and increased the range to 25%. This gives us more trees at uh, steeper points. I activate the cam optimization with the FOB boost 2.1. This means I only render the trees where the camera is pointing. I correct the terrain a little bit by distorting it on the X and Y axis. Now I add the shrubs. Here too, I use Geoscatter in combination with Botanic. Uh, here I hide all the other plants so that I can work as quickly as possible. I make the settings for the shrubs in almost the same way as for the trees. However, I set the slope range to 35 so that there are shrubs where the trees 
don't grow. The shrubs are a bit too small for me, so I increased the scaling to three. And additional, I correct the trees. I also increased the scaling of, of them to 1.5. I reduced the random scaling to 0.4. I don't usually change much in the color management. Uh, at first I tried something with the new HEX look, but then I resetted it later. You will see. What I often do is slight corrections to the curves, which gives me a slightly different color scheme. The render settings depend on the image. I usually render it first as a draft to see if everything fits and is correct. And in the final render, I reduced the noise threshold to 0.01 and increased the samples to 512. In the volume step, I reduced the mock step to 512. I reduced the strength of the displacement filter to 350 and the size of the trees to 1.2. So that you can achieve faster render results, you can delete unnecessary faces. And I can now increase the subdivision to four in viewport and six in the in rendering. I then tried to look at various other perspectives and then decided to use a different viewpoint. You should do this step before deleting the faces. Set the background to transparent so I can later use the matching sky in Photoshop. And that was it. I made a few color corrections in Photoshop and as I said, I added a sky. Um, yeah, and that's, that's it. I hope it was understandable and easy to follow for you and uh, you were able to learn something from it. Thanks everyone for watching and see you in the next one.